it's like uh, I've run short of it. I apologize for dear friends uh, who also would have liked to use this very moment to, um, you know, uh, you know, share the this uh, relationship between Ambazonia and Biafra. Uh, I'm very sorry. I have done this in the past, and I think this will be the last time such thing will happen that I will not be able to play you this Biafra anthem after playing that of our guest. Ambazonia and Biafra they have a whole lot of commonality. So if I play Ambazonian anthem, I think I should do the same. Um, Dr. Cho, this whole thing has been going around uh, for the past three years. The Ambazonian has been in this very struggle and in this very fight. And I think a lot of people have died in the process. Um, you know, millions have been displaced and a whole lot of things has happened. Well, we know that the relationship between um, Southern Cameroon and the rest of the Cameroon, the French colony, we are prompted by a post-independent agreement. One of the reasons why Southern Cameroon in, is fighting for the independent is said to be that uh, the Cameroonian government wants to integrate them into the French um, majority system forcibly. This is seen by many Ambazonian, by many um, Southern Cameroonian as an attempt to destroy the cultural heritage and the identity of the Anglophone population. Could you please um, elaborate the historical background of the relationship and why you are fighting to see this relationship revised? Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for having me and uh, all hail uh, Biafra. And I use this opportunity to ask um, the Nigerian government to release Mazinam Dikanu, my friend, and the leader of over 70 million uh, Biafrans. We will not allow imposters and occupiers to seize our leaders, put them in jail in their own countries, because they rise up to oppose their system of impunity and brutality. And so I encourage Biafrans to remain defiant uh, in the face of what has happened to them all through history and what is going on in the great land of Biafra. Ambazonia and Biafra represent an economic block, a people whose economic activities and ingenuity can bring uh, peace in the Gulf of Guinea and, and create wealth that can improve the lives of our people. We must resist imposters and tyrants who think genocide is the way forward to impose their rule on us and they remain unaccountable and we will continue to resist until we push them out of our land. Uh, concerning your question, uh, they, um, there, were, there has never been an agreement between Ambazonia and Cameroon. Cameroon is an imposter occupier. Ambazonia is occupied by a state that gained independence on the 1st of January 1960 without Ambazonia. And it has used brutality, genocide, massacre, you know, to impose itself on our people. And uh, we are fighting to protect our land, our territorial integrity, and to institute within Ambazonia a system of governance that is a reflection of our socioeconomic and political reality. And so we have in the past 60 years been resisting Cameroon at different levels. But in the past five years, there has been a full blown war uh, against our people that has resulted in the displacement of over 2 million people has affected the lives of 4.5 million uh, Ambazonians. So um, to cut the long story short, we are an occupied territory and we are up in resistance against a, a brutal occupier who has no reason to be in our land. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, you, you said there is no agreement. There is um, the conception, there is the, uh, one of the things that the uh, Cameroonian side continues to hold on is they use the word referendum, but there is the difference between referendum and plebiscite. So I propose to use the word agreement because I expect you to help us, you know, dis distinguish between referendum and plebiscite. 
um, if there was a plebiscite, uh, it can be said that it's not, for, for example, something that um, is holding. Uh, and there was, if there was no referendum, then there was no agreement, like you said. Could you please shed light on these two conceptions, two um, vocabularies, to help our viewers understand why you said there is no agreement? First, um, we should understand that um, Ambazonia, as well as um, Cameroon, including uh, uh, other trust territories, was a category B trust territory under the United Nations trusteeship system. And under Article 76B of uh, the Charter, the trustee was supposed to manage those trust territories until they gain their independence. And that's what France did with Cameroon. And Cameroon gained independence on the 1st of January, 1960, without Ambazonia. And the United Nations, um, instead of fully granting us uh, uh, independence after we had constituted our government, our house of cheese, our house of parliament. They decided because of the fear of communism to uh, impose a plebiscite on, on us. A plebiscite is an expression of intention. And so um, they asked if we would want to integrate within Nigeria or to, to form a, a bicultural uh, federal system of governance with, with Cameroon and our people elected to form a bicultural system of federalism with Cameroon. But that was simply an expression of an intention. Uh, the United Nations uh, passed resolution 1608 on the 15th of April, 1961, asking Cameroon and Ambazonia, including France and the United Nations, including the United Kingdom, to sit down and negotiate a binding understanding between Cameroon and Ambazonia that can be invoked as an international treaty. Do not forget, we were being run as a parliamentary um, a system of governance, where even in the United Kingdom, when they voted to leave the European Union, that vote on its own was not binding either on the UK or on the EU. It needed an act of the UK Parliament to make it binding on the United Kingdom. And then it needed a, a signed agreement between the United Kingdom and the EU to make it a binding treaty under international law. The intention, the vote of uh, 11 February 1961 was never translated into an act of the Ambazonian Parliament. Neither was the premise of resolution 1608 passed in April 1961, ever translated into an international agreement between Yaoundé and Boya. Cameroon was used by France to impose itself, to manipulate its own constitution, which it imposed on Amazonia, manipulating Amazonian leaders, um, refusing to negotiate on the premise of the UN resolution, claiming we were all some black people and they wanted to recreate the so-called German Cameroon, where Cameroon was the mother, mother state. So a plebiscite is, a, is an expression of an opinion, which we did to make that outcome binding under international law, you must negotiate an international treaty, which Cameroon failed to do. And the, the, the expression of that outcome was never binding also on Amazonia. So that's why we call it outright occupation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before uh, you know, coming to this program, I try to understand the whole thing from the point of view which you have just um, explained, because I wanted our viewers to understand the crux of the issue, you know, uh, from its uh, political point of view. Because um, it is not just enough talking on, uh, you know, social media without the educating our people. Um, that's what Namikano does, and I believe that's what you. Uh, you do as well, based on what I have heard so far, some of your audios. So letting our people understand what exactly is the problem there is very important that it was a plebiscite and essentially that a plebiscite is not binding. Uh, you can go out and look it up in the dictionary, if you will, you'll find out what a plebiscite means. So the occupation, as you put it, is uh, a very uh, sad one. Now, um, the question is, 
How do you get out from there? Because the Cameroonians, they have the international community behind them and uh, you are doing all you can do in order to make things work. You still have other issues like the internal conflict, but we are going to get that um, later on. So um, I would like to ask you now, sir, what's the direction of this struggle now and before actually? Yes, in, in, in the past uh, 30 years or so, we have uh, tried to get Cameroon to the understanding that its policies within Ambazonia are detrimental to its own political future and stability in the Gulf of Guinea and the enjoyment of our people of their right as, 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 as a people. And we have proposed several internal solutions that could have solved you know, um, you know the conflict between us and, and Cameroon. But Cameroon has believed very strongly that the use of the military is the only way, is the only solution on the table. And each time, whether when we were students in the university, that we have sought to address specific issues like the nature of our educational system, the nature of our common law system, the economic policies of Cameroon in our land, Cameroon has simply responded with brutal force. It has rigged every election organized in our land. It has imposed uh, two old men as president over our country for the past 60 years. And so in the last five years, uh, lawyers and teachers went on the streets to ask for a reformation of both legal and educational system to make sure that we can enjoy as Amazonians the common law system that is, you know, fundamental to our own existence or an educational system that makes our students an asset, not a liability. Cameroon responded with the arrest of lawyers and teachers, jailing them, brutally murdering thousands of our people. And I invoke the right of our people uh, to self-defense for the self-preservation of our people. And in the past five years, we have established an opposing army we have eliminated their educational system and political structures in most part of, of Amazonia. And going forward, we have established our own educational system under Amazonian supervision and control. We have um, asked all drivers within Amazonia to make sure that Cameroon and Semak number plates are not allowed within Amazonia. We've raised down their flag and raised ours. We've set in place our, our anthem. We are now building what we call the Transitional Liberation Councils to look after our own communities in areas of education, in areas of development, uh, uh, sanitation. So we are gradually building a prototype system of Amazonia that will become a full-fledged uh, and independent state. Our priority now is to defend the lives of our people, is to defend our territorial integrity, and to dismantle the last structures of Cameroon that are still scattered around Bazonia and being used as proxy centers of intelligence gathering, used in the killing of our people. We are at war, and I ask the world and Biafrans to support us to dislodge these enemies so that we can live in peace and freedom in our land. Thank you very much, sir. The, your, your intention is clear. Um, no going back just forward and establishing the uh, structures that will enable you, you know, uh, get your, your uh, the ambassadors together and uh, move forward. Then um, uh, we recognize, uh, I understand that uh, in most cases, one of the means used by oppressors to exert power over the people they, uh, you know, they oppress is to recruit politicians from the ranks of the oppressed. Um, I would like to know these, uh, um, you know, what is the position of the uh, Ambazonian politicians in the in the face of this struggle? Ambazonian politicians are enablers of colonialism and enablers of subjugation. Colonialism and oppression usually succeeds when the op the oppressor recruits from amongst the oppressed, enablers and colonizers. I have ordered for all of their arrests and they should be tried for treason, for enabling genocide and colonialism. And we are hunting them down 
one after the other, I will eliminate them from our land for the pain that they have caused uh, to our people. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, once again, um, many international observers believe that uh, the problem of internal conflict, like I've just mentioned previously, is still one of the most challenging tasks that the Ambazonian fighters must have to solve if they are to succeed in their struggle for independence. What do you say to this? Internal conflict is part and parcel of um, every liberation struggle. You can understand a people who have been denied the right to life, the right to liberty and security, the right to humanity, uh, the right to freedom of assembly, the right to vote. For the past 60 years, when they rise up in resistance, you would expect um, these schisms, these uh, initial divisions amongst them in terms of strategy, in terms of approach, and uh, we also know the enemy works extremely very hard to foil these divisions because it helps it helps them. The Amazonians are united in their objective. We we'll have our days of divisions, but I'm also working extremely very hard to bridge the gap between myself and other movements and leaders. I just left London uh, last weekend where I met with um, the chairperson of the APLM, Dr. Akwanga, and we discussed how to work together. We have our challenges, but I can assure you that our challenges are far less, you know, consequential in, in the face of a genocidal system that uh, we are facing. Less than 40% uh, of Americans support their, supported their, their struggle for independence. We found in Eritrea, there were different factions. We found in South Africa, there were different factions. We will work extreme very hard to bridge the gap between ourselves so that we can end the nightmare imposing our land. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I want to show uh, our viewers a video of the Ambazonian uh, Defense Force, and then I will ask you uh, my question to that. Okay, so. Yeah. Um, all right. I think. 1st October 2021, this year, this one, the command two, under the Supreme General of the Ambassador, the Renfro General, being number, not to be easy, at the Supreme General, part of the battalion, and this, not to be easy, if you see, the only lady, iron lady, of the Ambassador Defense Force, not be easy. But now, God, you, know, you see this uh, command too. We don't know how to see them. No, it be easy, but now, God, you won't get power. The Ambassador of the Fair Force is today, the 6th January 2021, at the Supreme General of the EGF. You know, you begin there. If you see up, no, be easy. No, be easy, but now, God, you won't get power. Um. Okay. Um, now, sir, um, Dr. Cho, you are often described as a hardline among other factions. <laughs> uh, this is also evident in the fact that you are the only one among the leaders who have raised an army to fight for the Ambazonian independence. Nevertheless, you must agree that the this continued division, um, uh, you know, the continued division among the Ambazonian freedom fighters is not conducive to the struggle. Uh, you've just mentioned um, how you met, you know, um, one of your colleagues in London. Okay, um, is there another thing? I mean, you intend to do in order to overcome this division? Uh, as you know, it's a serious issue, and it, hence it's to overcome. Uh, the sky is the limit. We are going to overcome the division, and I have. Uh, I'm taking steps. I have spoken to to other leaders, and so we can find models of collaboration that can help us work together. Um, there, there, there are other leaders who it, 
will, will, will join forces with us with time. You know, division is part and parcel of uh, every society, even in your family, uh, at home, even with your spouse. It's not easy to agree on everything. The first thing is to accept that there, there are divisions. The second is to work hard, to show understanding and to find a common position, even on, 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 on little issues. And we are working hard. And I am definitely very sure that we will overcome the, the, the divisions. Ambazonia will remain a plural society with different political formations representing different interests, different directions and different methodologies and strategies. And we will respect this plurality because that's, that's what makes also the garden a beautiful place, different sort of flowers and colors. Um, but we must avoid the enemy infiltrating us and exploiting these uh, divisions for its own end. So I can assure our people that we are working extremely very hard and I ask them to support the various efforts and to make sure they themselves don't fuel the division for, for their own ends. Who, I'm not a hardliner. I think I have been very soft <laughs> with respect to the, the kind of ferocity that we are facing on the other side. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You don't, you don't believe me? You don't believe me? <laughs> <laughs> well, you said that, that uh, I mean, you are just one of them that single-handedly organized organized a rally at the university, uh, you know, students' um, 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 demonstration, one single-handedly. It's your record. And uh, the, the, the issue of the uh, um, uh, demonstration in here in, uh, in, in Germany, it, uh, I mean, it's just few people who can do that. I didn't, I didn't even know that. that you had a demonstration in Germany, you know, against the uh, concerning the discrimination of uh, asylum. Uh, I mean, when someone calls you a, um, a hardliner, there is a reason for that, and it's actually not a. I mean, it's not derog. On the contrary, is is a respect. Um, uh, that said, um, let's just go forward because I think I still have more to ask. Um, the Berlin Conference, I want to know it from this point of view, of 18 to, uh, 18 for, uh, 1884 to 1885, um, also known as the Congo Conference of West Africa Conference or West Africa Conference, uh, regulated European, you know, colonization and uh, trade in Africa during the new imperialism. However, it also gave European countries the right to treat African as a uh, as property, one of the you know the measures European took then uh, to make sure is to make sure that there is unhindered and enduring exploitation was to match African nationality, which had nothing in common um, regarding culture and landscape. Um, expectedly, this would lead to you know uh, endless dispute among the matched nation. The relationship between Ambazonia and Cameroon the French colony and the resulting dispute could be seen as one of many in African countries. What impact do you think the struggle for Ambazonia independence has on African nations that have been thrown together into countries by European imperialism? One of the biggest tragedy of the founding fathers of African Pan-Africanism Pan or African nationalism um, was to focus on the, what they call the, the, the Berlin Conference and even the notion of a nation state as of 1648, the Westphalian no notion of the nation state. And so they developed anti-colonial stance or pan-Africanist views based on opposition to what they perceive as artificial borders uh, created uh, within the continent. What they never recognized and put on the table was also how to address the schisms or divisions that have existed within the continent because of the migration of different tribes, the hostilities and, 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 and different uh, 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 clans conquering different, different places. 
the Ambazonian struggle is not based on what we perceive as those colonial lines. It is based on the notion of peoples who live within a particular territorial space and through time and space have developed common practices, a common way of life, a common uh, a system of living that gives them opportunity to live together. Now, the concept of nation state is developed along what they call natural topographies. We understand the Berlin Conference totally created artificial borders here and there, but some of those borders followed natural topographies like mountains, oceans, big rivers that were obstacles to the movement of people. And those natural barriers usually give people the opportunity to bond together, develop ways of farming, develop rearing things, and, and developing a system of, of, of local governance. Our struggle is to remind Africans and African tyrants who have hung on to power on this supposed uh, anti-white colonial uh, systems that you cannot then turn around and treat Biafrans as though they were a captured people or treat Amazonians as though they were a captured people. And if you want to dismiss the notion of the creation of African states based on artificial borders, you must respect the rights of peoples who have lived together for very long to practice their culture, exploit their resources and ensure that they can enjoy those resources. So our struggle is to build a new nation of Pan-Africanism that respect the rights of peoples to self-determination, be they internal or external, and that states are created based on the consent of these people to join freely and not by force. You cannot force a people to be part and parcel of a political system when it does not give them the opportunity to live a self-fulfilling life. The struggle within Ambazonia is a message to all peoples in Africa and to the tyrants who run the, the European created, created plantations called states, that we want a new Africa, the, new cre the creation of new states in Africa based on the rights of peoples who have commonalities in culture, in language, in uh, different ways of life, that these states that are existing within the continent are unsustainable. Right. Thank you. And then, as, as, as it is now, uh, Ambazonia's, uh, I mean, one can confidently say that Ambazonia have, have shown that re resilience and resistance is actually uh, perhaps one way, you know, one effective way to get your neck out of the nozzle of uh, oppressor. I mean, you have been in this situation for the past three years and uh, <laughs> there is no foreign help. It's uh, every issue has been, you know, done so far by Ambazonians. Um, is there any other country I, I mean, you can say that they, are, they have acknowledged the Ambazonian effort so far. Biafra has acknowledged it. That's, that's important. That's, that's our neighbor. Right. It's 70 million strong, one of the strongest economy uh, within the continent. We have other countries. The United States has imposed uh, some limited sanctions on Cameroon. The United States has called for immediate settlement. The United Kingdom Parliament, both the House of Commons and the House of Lords, have debated the issue and have made it absolutely clear that the existing status quo cannot survive. The German Parliament has done the same. We have, I mean, the European Union has spoken about it. Um, the UN has appointed a special envoy about it. The international system um, call on the Swiss to provide their good offices for a kind of a mediated settlement. Um, one of my strategies from the beginning 
was to function like the eagle, to take away the struggle from the space where Cameroon was more comfortable to a space where it wasn't comfortable. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. I don't know why you're laughing. <laughs> no, it's a. Uh, I, I, I mean, it makes sense for somebody to understand that um, you cannot beat someone with the, with his own uh, means. You yes. must you must contrive a means that is quite different from that of your opponent in order to be able to match him. So it's uh, unintelligible. You know, it's it makes sense. So, well, um, the I mean, the, the separatist forces have been uh, repeatedly accused of civil misconduct by the government in Yaoundé. Um, a Voice of African report, um, America report on 15th September 2022, quotes a Cameroonian official statement that attacked and threats by the separatists have led to closure of many schools since the start of the school uh, this year. Uh, that's with, um, this month, September 2022. So what is your reaction to this allegation? My question is, uh, are, they, are these uh, well-founded or would you say that these are uh, these were mere, uh, mere pure propaganda by the Cameroonian uh, government amid at, uh, you know, uh, aimed at uh, tarnishing the image of all the separatist groups? Uh, first thing I have called on uh, people to dig every uh, Cameroon school existing in Ambazonia, dig it from the foundation. Um, I don't think you can uh, allow a foreign country to simply come into your land and build four walls and call them a school where it intoxicates uh, uh, our students. So every school that is owned and run by Cameroon should be dug from the ground. If that's what Cameroon calls attack on schools, then it should reconsider its claim to our land. Um, now, there has been some infractions by our own forces, there is no doubt. Uh, this is a very brutal war against our people and our forces are fighting under very difficult circumstances and you would expect some human rights violations. But those human rights violations are not systematic in nature. They are not driven by policy unlike what we are facing as a people against you know the the thugs and imposters on the other side they're committing genocide they've burned down more than 1200 villages they have displaced more than 1.2 million people they have committed more than 120 massacres they've kidnapped our comrades from nigeria and from biafra land and deported them to Yaoundé where they have detained them under inhumane and degrading condition. They have kidnapped more than 3,000 of our people and subjected them to systematic torture, which is a crime against humanity under the status of the ICC. So if there is any party to this conflict that is committing genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity, and crime of aggression, and the illegal extension of its border at independence, it's Cameroon. And that's the state that should be put under an ad hoc uh, tribunal for trial or under the status of the ICC. We accept that there are infractions on our side, but those are little infractions which we have dealt with um, uh, time and again. And we'll continue to educate our forces to know that you cannot emulate the practices of the enemy. You cannot um, act on your people in a way that contravenes the reason for which you are, you are fighting that the primary responsibility of our forces is to protect the integrity of our people, safeguard the interests of our people, and defend them against any enemy, alien or domestic. Right. Thank you. And uh, let, let's talk about um, the diaspora. I mean, um, in this struggle, I believe the uh, the contribution of the diaspora cannot be underrated. So I, I, I want to know, uh, what is the role of uh, diaspora and Bazonia in the struggle? How helpful has the, you know, their participation been in the struggle? It has been very significant. It has been the only reason why Ambazonia is still existing. 
it has been the only reason why it's still existing. Social media has been the tool that we have used to expose the, the revisionism, uh, denials, and a manipulation of, uh, of Cameroon. So diaspora has been at the center of ensuring that our forces are armed, uh, refugees are taken care of, our IDPs uh, are taken care of. Uh, they've also played some negative roles in terms of foiling the division. And we can, we can look at that from the perspective of uh, the education we have received thus far. Manipulation, the system of corruption, where merit and knowledge has no place. Thuggery, lies and manipulation makes you a, a hero within the society. And uh, we have been using countermeasures like education and um, historical examples to let the, the diasporan community that has been very, very instrumental to understand that they can be, they can play a more positive role and they should help, you know, our people who are suffering under the terror of Cameroon, you know, to speedily end their occupation. So diaspora will remain um, uh, very important going forward. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, I think this will be my last question. I would like us to, uh, I mean, talk a little bit about your relationship with uh, the leader of the IPOB, Mazin Namdekano. Um, you know, it, it must be said that both of you, uh, I mean, you and Namdekano seems to understand and appreciate these commonalities, you know, uh, between uh, Ambazonia and Biafra. Consequently, you are the only one among uh, the Ambazonian freedom fighter who declared an alliance with Biafra at a joint press conference with Nnamdi Kanu, the leader of the IPOB. And, uh, you know, however, since uh, 19th of July, 2021, Nnamdi Kanu has been abducted by the Nigerian government in Kenya, brought to back to Nigeria and held in a DSS uh, center. Um, so what has happened to this declaration of alliance? Does the you know the stated aim of this alliance still exist despite the absence of Namde Kano? It's even stronger when you declare friendship and one of what well, if your friend is taken, that is the moment that friend in jail knows whether you're a real friend or not. We are more closer to Biafra today if, uh, before than before the the alliance was declared. And I, we, we maintain a healthy relationship with the, with the DOS of the I, IPOB. We are in communication with them. Uh, we discuss on issues. We follow what is going on in Biafra land. We make statements. We call on the release of the leader of the Biafran people. And we have stated it absolutely clear. A threat uh, on Biafra is a threat to Ambazonia uh, because Yaoundé and Abuja um, are in lockstep to ensure that they can they can destroy the dreams of both the Biafrans and the Amazonian people. And that existential threat calls on us Amazonians and Biafrans to stand up. Uh, Biafra was betrayed because uh, Cameroon, you know, decided to uh, side with, with, with Nigeria to make sure that a genocide occurred with, between 1967 and when the Biafran war ended. And they have repeated that. It is time Biafrans understand we, Amazonians and Biafrans, all these butchers and impostors, no child support. They should leave our land. Whether they kill me tomorrow, they kill Mazi tomorrow, we, the people, must rise up and end this tyranny that has brought terrible pain and suffering on both peoples. That the land that is so endowed with natural resources has become a massive graveyard for both peoples. These two peoples have survived based on their creativity, their ingenuity, their ability to survive under difficult circumstances of terror and exclusion. And whether we are murdered, whether what happens, let these two people understand the end of Nigeria and the end of Cameroon 
must come as soon as possible. And I've, I've stated it clear. The survival of the Cameroon state and the state of Nigeria depends on the preservation of Biafra and Amazonia. Let them take note. The continuous existence and stability of these two countries is directly linked to the self-preservation of Biafra and Amazonia. Not that we hate, we don't hate Nigeria. We don't we hate Cameroon. We are not fighting against Cameroon. We are not fighting against Nigeria. We are fighting for our right to exist in the land of our birth. The greatest factors of production is land, labor, and capital. The land is taken away. Yeah. Labor is not even desired. We have no capital. Mm -hmm. And so we have nothing. And the last breath that we have you know, should be used for the preservation of these lands. And we call on Nigerians themselves to rise against the tyranny that exists in their land and Cameroonians to, to do the same. We are speaking also to the uh, Oduruwa people. We must bond together and preserve our nations. And we will decide as peoples to establish political institutions that is a reflection of our reality to create the kind of states that will protect us from harm, exploit our resources, to improve the lot of our people. Thank you very much, Dr. Chiu. <laughs> um, I think this is our last, you know, last question. Uh, before we go, I, I want to ask you a question. You are, you are essentially an intellectual, and but then you still retain your humanity. Um, uh, do you know the word um, intellectual? Have you ever heard it of intellectual? Intellectual. Oh, it's like his picture is frozen. All right, that's very unfortunate. That's actually was supposed to be the last discussion. Um, I don't know what happened to his picture. Um, yes, I don't really know how to handle the case now anyway, but uh, yeah, I think we actually have uh, had uh, our last question before that happened. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, we thank you very much for being around today for this discussion. Despite uh, the delay and uh, you know disturbance we had as a result of uh, one thing or the other that happened with the system, but we actually made it to have this discussion. So, um, please um, connect to us through Facebook and Twitter and then um, subscribe to our YouTube so that you can be notified each time we have a new video. This is Miro African Diaspora TV, live on Facebook and YouTube. My name is Robinson Afan Efna Ambrose. You are welcome today and thank you for being part of the discussion today. And uh, that's it. I wish you a wonderful evening, wherever you are. Thank you very much for today's discussion. Bye-bye.